Hello tribe, you're welcome to Floki's Den. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We talk about everything that helps settlement easy for new immigrants that are looking forward to coming into a new land. So if this sounds like what you want to keep watching, do stick around because on today's vlog, we'll be sharing with you top skills that new immigrants or outbound immigrants need to have soft skills we're talking of soft skills for you to be able to get into this work stream or this multicultural society called canada you know canada is diverse there are so many immigrants out of five you'll find four that are immigrants within canada and you want to be able to put your best foot forward to at least as you are bringing the technical skills you're bringing as well the soft skills to be able to harness all that you're delivering into the work stream so do keep watching First off, I will let you know that here in Canada, there are various accents. Yes, I'm sure I have an accent if you are not a Nigerian that you are watching me right now. And you might be wondering what she's saying or how is she saying this. What I will encourage you to do is familiarize yourself with the different accents that are obtained here in Canada. I don't want to streamline this to Saskatoon because I'm filming from Saskatchewan, Saskatoon in Canada. But this is diverse because it is Canada-wide, guys. As many immigrants, I talked earlier that out of five people that move into Canada, you have four that are immigrants. So check what they say, how they speak, even their language, even from their local dialects, from their home country. There are still different ways in which they speak. So we also, as Nigerians, for instance, we know when we hear people that speak from the northeast or from the southwest or from the northwest, we know exactly where they are from within Nigeria, let alone the whole of Canada. So. When you hear people's accent from India, from Pakistan, or from Chinese, or from Nigeria, and even Canadians, their accents are different. What I will encourage you to do is to just familiarize yourself. Familiarize yourself. Don't be shy to speak the way you speak. A Canadian will say a Pakistani has an accent. A Nigerian will say a Canadian has an accent. Because we are all finding it difficult to understand what we are all saying because there's a way we all speak. So don't be ashamed of yours, just speak it. And by the time you get familiarized with how each person speak, then it becomes easier for you to relate better with them. These are some of the challenges that new immigrants face when they move into Canada. I also faced it, trying to understand what other cultures um, language looks like or whatever they are saying. I have to put my ears really close to their mouth to understand what they are saying. Students as well, I have heard in the past that some students say they go with their recorder or put record, press record on their phone to be able to at least hear what the lecturer is saying and then go back to play. So these things happen in a multicultural society. So you won't be exempted if you are looking forward to moving into Canada. Be rest assured that this is one of the, well, shock we call it, but it's also a soft skill that you need to understand. So when you watch or explore more about Canada, you hear people speak from different countries that they come from. Try to understand exactly how they speak so that you'll be able to understand them better when you land. Another soft skill I will encourage you as new immigrants or aspiring immigrants coming into Canada to learn is to have that communication skill. Communication skill is diverse. Um, it spans from having those small talks when you meet people newly because you're an immigrant, you're going to be facing or meeting people every day, new people from diverse um, countries that they've actually landed from. So you want to initiate conversations with them. You want to at least interact with them. You want to start those conversations and you can start with small talks. Small talks are really good ways in which you can draw people into conversation. You can ask about the weather, which is always a common thing that we all talk about here. You can ask them whether in the workplace you can say, what do you think about what was spoken about? What do you think about the topic? Um, what's your weekend going to be like? Those are small talks just to initiate conversation for you to kick off more conversations from just that start off. This helps you build connection, it helps you build relationships. And I want to encourage you to just be friendly, guys. When you meet people on the way, try and be friendly, smile, maintain eye contact. These are ways that you are showing that you are attentive to whatever they are saying and you are interested. 
So, new immigrants, this is one thing that you need to learn. These are soft skills. Now, I know that when you're trying to get into the workforce, they look at hard skills. Soft skills are also things that people look forward to in the workplace. So you want to add this to your technical skills so that you are well-rounded even in the workplace because you'll be interacting with people in the workplace with diverse culture. So you want to be friendly. You want to show that you're paying attention. You want to show that you're being proactive even to the work that they're being given to you. You want to show that you're attentive and you're friendly. You want to smile when you're spoken with. Um, you want to leave all your problems at the door of your house before you get to work. You know, all these things aid and help good communication in the workplace and in Canada generally. One other soft skill I'm going to mention is that, guys, this has to do with you being a good researcher of information or knowledge. Every one of us use our phones for so many things. We go on Google, we go on YouTube, we begin to search for information. We, you know, what do we do with this information? Basically, because we want to add knowledge to knowledge. We want to know what is happening in a particular country or concerning a particular topic. And when those conversations arise, we want to be able to contribute. So guys, it's important that you research so much about Canada that you're looking forward to coming into. Don't just be someone that just gets information dumped at you without researching. You want to find out so much more about the culture, the people, the food, the weather you want to find out so much about the population so many things about canada and while you're also desiring to step into that workplace whether you have landed or looking forward to you must be able to research about that company research research and research research about everything you, you must have google at your fingertips try and research all that you need to know all you want to know don't wait for people to always give you i know Moving into Canada, some people just want others to be dumping information on them. No, don't be that kind of person. You want to be also a problem solver. For instance, you work in an organization and they're asking about something. You already have a resource. You understand where to get to what. You know how to be able to dive into those situations. Or you come up with quick and easy solutions to those problems because you have researched. And... This also brings me to connections and networking because that's another way in which you can um, thrive well when you're researching. Uh, you can lean on your connection, you can lean on your network to be able to assist you in other things that you're looking for. So don't be a lone ranger, guys. Don't be the only one ranging and waiting for information to be done. Let people also wait on you to give them feedback or information on a particular situation, topic, idea, you know, problem that you need to solve. So guys, go research about Canada if you have not yet landed. And if you are landed, begin to research about the culture, the workplace that you're looking forward to working. Begin to research about everything, how to interact with immigrants, how to network. Begin to research. Another soft skill I'll be addressing right now is positive thinking. I know sometimes we don't consciously think about these things but I think it's one thing that we need to be proactive about we need to consciously be positive minded in the things that we do and this helps us ex especially in the workplace we need to be conscious about how we think or interact with people you know positivity charges you when someone is positive in the way they think they speak it charges you the person is always a pleasure to be around. So you want to be that kind of person in the workplace or in the society, around your community, in your neighborhood, that people always want to be with because you are always positive-minded. Um, a situation might be brought to you and you are just thinking of how to positively address it. You are not necessarily looking at, yes, it looks bad, the situation looks bad, it looks daunting, it looks difficult, but you are not speaking out in the negative negativity drains and nobody wants to be around anybody that drains you if you have a friend that always nags at you if you have a friend that always complains if you have a friend that always sees the negative part of you that always says something brings you down you don't want to be around such a person so you have to be positive in your attitude and the way you think so many people want to draw around you and this helps you in the workplace as well. When you work in an organization, people look at you and they say, wow, they love this person, always charged, always ready, positive minded. And when situations arise, they know that when they go to you, 
you always turn out positivity even though the situation looks bad but you are always coming up with good words encouraging words that tell people that yeah there's always light at the end of the tunnel this is a good vibe to always have in the workplace so you want to inculcate this you want to work on yourself if you are someone if you are not someone like that, so that you will be able to connect well with other immigrants around your society, workplace, and your neighborhood. And with being positive, this brings me to thinking, based on my observation, that Canadians are always not direct in their approach to conversations when they have to say things to you. Um, you know, when things happen and they need to tell you things directly, they don't say it as it is. They will never tell you what they really think. You know, I think it's part of them. They are just being polite. They will never tell you exactly how something or a situation is or what they think about you. They would ramble around, you know, in a bit to be polite, in a bit to probably hide the truth from you or sometimes lying to you. But they never come out to you to say exactly what a situation looks like. And this is very tricky for us immigrants that actually have come from a more direct society or culture whereby when things happen, we tell you, you're being rude or you should have done this or why did you do this? Or, you know, we come direct and we say things as they are. But when you move into a multicultural society like Canada, you don't have to be direct. You can't be direct because you are imbibing or you are, you are trying to infuse both cultures. So you must be um, indirect and polite in your approach because if you are too direct they look at you as being rude being insulting or being negative you, you how can you just say that to the person you know they just look at you like oh, you just said that you need to be careful as you infuse both cultures i know there's so many things that we need to unlearn and i'm going to come there also just in a bit we have so much especially as new immigrants there's so much that is going on here in canada and we just have to learn what is happening here i'm not saying learn the bad things guys no but you want to understand the culture you want to be able to walk around because if you don't infuse yourself within the culture it's difficult for you to um, see yourself working with other team members you are just the only one different from everybody they see you as She's too direct in her approach. Or they see you as being too negative in, in the things that you say. And you don't want to be seen in that direction. And these are soft skills. These are unspoken truths that, you know, people begin to notice in you as you work in a workplace where there's diversity, guys. So you need to be able to approach it gently. And on this approach, I would just say, try to be kind in, you know, your approach in the things that you say, rather than just trying to feel right or pull that you're right, you know. In my own culture, you just want to prove beyond reasonable doubt that I am right, say. And that's what spans arguments, that's what spans so much talk and, you know, back and forth of conversations, because some people are just trying to prove the obvious. You are right in your own eyes. The other person is right in, your own, in their own eyes. So you don't have to prove to anybody that you are right just be kind. Business etiquette is also something that I call a soft skill that we need to embrace. From my own culture back in Nigeria, it's termed rude when you call your supervisor by name or your manager by name or you call them by their first name. It's either you're using Mr. their last name or you're using Mr. their first name but you don't outrightly call Jack, Ben, Kevin. You don't call them by their first name. It terms being rude. And that's part of the business etiquette that we know from our own culture. But moving into Canada, guys, it is different. You have to unlearn that. I know it looks as if, how can I be calling my boss by the name? But that's how it operates here in Canada. You can actually call them by name. I know also for us in, um, in Nigeria, also, some people might not feel comfortable even using Mr. Your Name. You know, they just feel it's rude to call you by your name. That's our culture. If you feel, what's that? That's our culture. People feel so bad or the people feel that they are disrespecting you when they call you by your name. So they don't just want to mention your name. Whether they are putting Mr. in front of your name or they are calling you by your last name, Mr. Your Last Name. Like in my workplace, in my old organization, what we imbibed was our initials. So, um, um, Afolake Idris, or Folake Idris, removing the A. 
I usually was called FI. So FI was my initial that was comfortable for everybody to call me without seemingly feeling that they are being rude to me calling my name or they feel that they are overly just feeling like they can't warm up to me because sometimes the way you approach somebody or the way you call somebody dictates the relationship with the person. So FI kind of bridges that gap and people call me FI. So everybody that I know, everybody in my life calls me FI and that's how I am being identified in my workplace and then it has spun into family into friends everybody just knows me as fi without calling my name except you have to write my name or something so that was what we were used to um, but here you have to call everybody by their first name and that's kind of difficult for so many people especially when your supervisor or your manager is really older than you and then you're looking like am i not being disrespectful but you're not so those are part of the business etiquettes that you need to learn. These learnings have to be done in a conscious place. That means you have to unlearn the things that you know. You have to learn the new things and you have to keep learning. Because learning is a process. It's a perspective in which you identify the things that you need to drop and the things that you need to pick up. So it's a process. You can't finish learning, guys. So as immigrants and even people that are already landed for many years, they're still learning in the process. So we need to understand that these are soft skills that we need to imbibe as new immigrants or aspiring immigrants. Guys, don't waste your time anxiously waiting to land in Canada without developing these skills. While you are transiting into the new culture, multicultural society, begin to consciously learn. Begin to consciously learn and relearn all these things so that it helps you. Uh, it might take a while for you to really make it a part of you. But another way for you to learn is for you to ask questions. When you don't understand something or you feel, why did this happen this way? Because it might be alien to you. It might be really something that you can't understand oh is this how it's done because you in your wildest thought would not have approached it that way but that's how it's done here in a multicultural society guys so you need to ask questions you need to ask questions so that you understand the process you understand what is expected of you if you are even given a task in your workplace you're asking questions is this exactly you know it's like giving that question it's like asking that question back or sending it back to you. Whoever asks you, do you mean you want me to do this or is this how you want me to do it? It's just reaffirming that question so you understand what has been said. But question helps you to learn and it helps your process and your journey for you to be able to unlearn the things that you know and begin to relearn the new things here in Canada. And while you work in a multicultural workplace, always ask for feedback from your supervisor, from your colleagues. You are trying to integrate and you might still be doing something within your own cultural understanding from your home country. Ask questions, ask for feedback. Am I doing it right? Am I, is this what is expected of me? What do you think? Tell them to actually give you a fair response. I know because I mentioned earlier that Canadians are not direct in their responses. They are just being polite. So if you're doing something wrong, you might not hear them say, you, did, you spoke to that guy wrongly or you, did, you might not hear them say that. They would sugarcoat it for you and make you feel good as if you have done something. But sometimes you also need to understand the fine lines. When they are saying things to you, they say the positive, they say the negative, then they say the positive. It's like a sandwich. So you have to be conscious and listen attentively to what they are saying. But if you still can't catch the drift, tell your supervisor your colleague and tell them that look you're trying to understand the culture you relearning the things here and you know sinking into how things are really done here and you will appreciate when they're giving you feedback to try to be direct while they're trying to be polite to you they should also at least give you some direct responses so you know where and how to be able to make amends. This will help you in the long way, in the long haul, and in your journey to settling in Canada. 
these are my few soft skills that I thought would be helpful to you in the workplace, in your community, in your neighborhood, as you network and as you, you know, and as you begin to mingle with other immigrants within Canada. If this has been helpful to you, do hit the subscribe button, share this video to as many that you think might be interested in watching it, and comment below if you have other suggestions that other immigrants or you have experienced in your workplace or even in Canada at large, whatever soft skills that you feel will be helpful to other immigrants to learn and begin to settle in their new role. Thank you so much for watching. See you again in another vlog. Bye, guys.